Welcome to lecture 56, Operator Overloading. So, so far in the course, we've seen overloading a couple of times. We saw function or method overloading, then we saw constructor overloading. Now we're looking at operator overloading. So the, the concept of overloading is the same in all. You're basically, you're supplying a second or third or fourth implementation of some kind of action. So we had method overloading, we had two functions with the same exact name, but different bodies and parameters maybe. So they were, they were slightly different, but the names were the same, so they are basically different implementations of each other. Operator overloading is almost the same exact thing. We're basically rewriting the functionality of operators. Now, what is an operator? We talk about operators all the time, but you may not know exactly what they are. An operator is a, a symbol. An operator is some kind of action and symbol. So like the plus operator, the minus, times, times, divide. All these are operators. They're symbols, but they perform some kind of action. So that's what we're overloading. Now the reason why we're overloading them is because our classes do not know how to handle them. And I'll explain what I mean by that. But let's start off by making a new class that we'll, that we'll use to actually overload the operators. So we're going to make a, a class called Bank Account. It's very basic. It's only going to have one, two pieces of data on the, behind the scenes. It will have a piece of data to hold how much money is in the bank account, so a double. And it'll hold a string of the owner of the bank account. So let's go ahead and add a new class by going Add New Item. I'm going to add a class called Bank Account add that class. So let's, let's start off by creating our private data behind the scenes. I'm going to say private double and I'm going to say uh, money. I'll call it money. Lowercase because it's private. Money and then private string owner. So we have a money and an owner for our bank account. Now we're going to create a constructor so that when a bank account is created you can set how much money is currently in it and you can set who the owner of it is. So to make the constructor, remember a constructor is a special type of function that has no return type. And the name of it is the name of the class. So public bank account, I need a double for the money, and then I need a string for the owner. Those are the two pieces of information that you need to supply this class in order to create an instance of it. Once I get that data, I'm going to say this.money equals money and this dot owner equals owner. So when I say this dot owner, I'm saying this one up here, the actual class's internal owner is equal to the owner of whatever is being passed into the class so that it actually sets the data for the class. That's the constructor. Now I want to write a uh, get and set or maybe just a get. I'm just going to supply a get for the money and the owner. I don't want to set. I don't want people being be able to change this information right now. So I'm just going to supply a get. Now I could do a get function or a get property. It does not matter. It's completely up to you. I'll use a property just because this is C sharp and I want to support C sharp's um, constructs. So I'm going to create a property. So I'm going to say public double public double money with a capital M because this is the this is the uh, public version. And I just want a get portion. That's it. So I'm just going to supply a get. So you can't actually set it. If I don't put a set in, you can't set it. So it basically becomes read only. So I'm going to say return money. And I'm going to say public string owner get return owner. So these are just two get um, properties so that you can actually get the owner and the money from the, from the program or from main because it's private there's no other way to actually get it this will now be the way we can get it obviously we can add constraints to this if we wanted to but our class is so small that there aren't really any constraints we need right now because this is all about operator overloading and not about class design so let's go ahead and create two bank account instances so we'll say bank account bank one equals new bank account they have fifty dollars in their bank account and this is Bob bank account Bank account bank two equals new bank account. They have $150 and their name is Fred. So we have two bank accounts. Now, operator overloading. 
I mentioned that operator overloading is the idea of rewriting the functionality of operators like plus minus for your individual class. Because I want you to think about this. When I have an integer, int x equals 5, and I have another integer, int y equals x plus 5. When I do this x plus 5, what does that actually mean? That plus, what does plus mean? The actual integer structure knows what to do with a plus. It knows, okay, I should add these numbers together. Because plus is just a symbol. It doesn't mean anything until you attach a meaning to it. So the structure of an integer has a meaning to it that says, okay, you should add these together and, re and return the number of what they are added together. That's what plus means for integers. Now, that differs with strings. When you have a string x equals hello, and then you have a string y equals world, and then you have a string z, which is equal to x, x plus y, we know that if I do x plus y with strings, this just concatenates. It doesn't actually do any math. It just combines the words hello and world together. So the actual definition of the plus operator is different in this case. It does something different for strings than it does with integers and doubles and things like that. So we can already see that there has to be overloading somewhere. The plus operator does different things in different contexts. And that's exactly what we're doing. Because if you think about it, what does it mean to add two bank accounts together? For example, if I have bank account bank3 equals bank1 plus bank2, what does that logically mean to us? Right now, it's giving us an error. It's saying, I have no idea what you're trying to do here. Think about it. What do you, what do you want it to mean? The, the computer right now has no idea because a bank account has two pieces of data. It has a money amount and it has a string. So it's saying, what do you want me to add together? Do you want me to add the, the amount of money together that they, each bank account has? Or do you want me to add their names together and concatenate them? What do you want me to do? It doesn't know what to do. So our job as a programmer is to specify, we want it to do this. For, we're basically setting up a definition saying, if you use a plus operator with my class, I want you to do that. That is what, it, it, what we're doing with operator overloading. Now, I want to mention that operator overloading is completely unnecessary. Operator overloading is one of the few things in programming that you do not need to know. Yes, it's nice. It's a nice convenience. However, it is not necessary. So if this is confusing you a lot, do not worry because it's not necessary. You could always make a function that does the same exact thing. You can have bank one dot add and it, it adds another bank account. So you can you can always always you can always handle operator overloading with just functions because an operator overload is just a function so you don't need to know this the only use of operator overloading is to make people's lives easier it makes it more logical saying okay add these two numbers add these together with a plus sign it's better than actually having to type out the word add or something like that so it's just that it, it's easier for some people it's only a convenience operator overloading is a convenience so, now, how do we actually fix this problem? Like I said, we need to define the rules of our class that says, if you are adding two bank accounts together, I want you to add the amount of money together, combine the amount of money, and then make the new bank account plus all of that. Maybe we should also combine the strings together, the owner's names together, add a little plus sign in the middle, saying now that this is Bob and Fred's bank account, and now their money are joined together into one bank account. So maybe that's what we want to do. So the computer does not know to do that by itself. We need to tell it to do that. So that's why we need to actually define this operator overloading. So now let's actually do it. How do we define it? So inside the class, we actually need to define the operator overload. Now, in this syntax, I'm going to use the word static again. Like I said, do not worry about static. It is required for operator overloading for a very specific reason that once you learn static, you will know why we have to say it's static. And I will go over static in the last lecture in this section on classes. That's devoted for the static keyword where I'll go over everything about the static keyword and what it does. So for now, just copy the word static until I go over it in that lecture. So, the syntax for overloading the plus operator. We're only overloading plus right now. We can overload many operators, like equals, is equal to, 
um, less than, greater than, we can overload almost anything. But I'm just overloading the plus in this lecture. So to do that, we're going to start off by saying public. All operator overloads need to be public. Then static. They all need to be static also. So that's what you just need to know and just copy for now. Now we need to get into the return type. So what is the return type of an operator overload? So we need to think about it. Okay, when we add bank 1 plus bank 2, what is the result of it? Well, it's another bank account. It makes bank 3. Bank 3 will have the money put together plus the names put together. So the return type of adding them together should be another bank. So we're going to return another bank account. Then it's actually what we're trying to overload. So I'm saying we're overloading the operator plus. We're overloading the plus operator. Then the last thing is its parentheses. Inside of its parentheses, we're going to specify what what's on the left and right hand side. Because it doesn't have to be a bank account on each side. What if I wanted to do bank account bank one plus a hundred? What does that mean? Well, we could also define that for an operator overload. Maybe we will in a second, but let's start out with we have bank accounts on both sides of the plus operator. So that's what goes inside of here. You can think of inside the parentheses, there's a comma. On each side goes what's on the left-hand side of the plus sign and on the right-hand side of the plus sign. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have a bank account, and we'll say bank one. On the right-hand side, we'll have another bank account called bank two. So on each side of the plus operator, we'll have a bank account. So this is saying, oops, this is saying we're adding two bank accounts together and it returns a bank account also. So the next thing we need to do is actually create this new bank account and then return it. It's really simple, but we're going to define what is going to happen. So let's, let's create some variables. Let's say int new amount of money is equal to bank one dot money so the bank one's money plus the bank two's money so we'll take both of their money oh this is it should be a double we'll take both of the bank's money we'll add it together and put it into this new amount then we'll create a new string for new owners and that will be equal to bank one dot owner plus a little plus sign so as a string I'm going to add this little plus sign in the middle to so that it's a joint account and then I'll add on bank to that owner. So now we have the new owners and the new amount of money. Once we have that, now we just create the new bank account based off of this information. So I'm going to say bank account, new bank account equals new bank account. And now I'm going to actually, con I'm going to put in the information for the constructor call. So I'm creating a new bank account in here. That's why I have to say the new keyword. This is a third bank account. And then I'm going to pass in a money amount and the owner amount. For this, uh, these amounts, I'm going to put in these new amounts over here. So I'm going to say new amount of money and then the new owners. Those are the new people of this account. So we created this new account. The last thing we need to do is just return it back to the plus operator. So I'm going to return the new bank account. Once I return the new bank account, it gets sent back into here. Now you can see the error is gone. It's saying, okay, when I do bank one plus bank two, oh, I see a plus operator. It says go to this code, do whatever it needs to do. Oh, it says, wow, it creates a new bank account and it returns it. By saying return new bank account, this reference gets returned and stored into here. So now bank three is equal to this new bank account. That's what happens. Bank three is equal to this bank account right here, which has the new amount of money and the new owners. That's what's happening. So by overloading this operator, I specified a new implementation of the plus operator for my specific class because I wanted to do something unique. I don't want to just add one number or something like that. It's doing two things, so I had to specify and tell it what to do when you use the plus operator. So now I have bank three, that the joint account of both, if I try to print the information of it and say console.writeline bank three dot owners and then console.writeline bank three dot money, how much money is in their account? I'm going to print both of their information for this joint account. Let's see what happens. You can see the owner of the account is Bob and Fred because it's a joint account and the amount of money is 200. It joined the, the money together and put it into this new bank account. 
by it's all it's all getting handled in this situation let's do one more version of the plus operator now let's say we want to then take bank three make another bank account we'll say bank account bank four equals bank three plus five hundred dollars we're going to get an error the reason why we're getting an error is because it's saying oh, wait wait a second I only know how to handle the plus operator with this class when the left and right hand side are both bank accounts. This is saying I don't know how to handle when just the left hand side is a bank account, but the right hand side is a double. It's saying I don't know how to do that. What should I do? So it's giving me an error. So we need to actually specify a new guideline. So I'm going to basically just copy this, paste it, and I'm going to change it up. The right hand side is now a double, so double amount. So the right hand side is just a double amount. Now we need to change this. So the owner is still going to be the same. So the owner is just going to be the same exact owner. So I'll just update that. We're not changing that anymore. But now the amount of money, instead of doing bank two dot money, I'll just do plus amount. So now I'm I'm providing an implementation for the double amount. So now when I go back, the error is gone. It's saying, oh, you taught me how to use a bank account and a double on the right hand side. So now it can handle that. So now when I print the information for bank four, so I'll print bank four. So the first two will be bank three. So bank three was Bob plus Fred, 200. Bank four is Bob plus Fred again. However, we added that $500 to it. So now it's $700. So we added a new implementation. You can now add to the bank account by doing the plus operator because we added an implementation for it. So that's all operator overloading is. It's just a shorthand for you, for providing a new definition of an operator. However, you do not need to do this. Like I said, you could build a function that does this that's just called add. Maybe it's just an add function. Very simple. You can make it stat. Well, you don't know what static is yet. Or you can make it instance. So it could just be a function called add and it takes in two bank accounts. You don't have to use the plus operator, but it can be nice in situations like this.